Hey folks, it's Mark here from Harmonics Tuition, back today with an intermediate lick for you, and it's an interesting one. This lick highlights the major third, which is an extremely interesting little sound to add to your minor pentatonic licks that you do and the scales that you play. I'm going to demonstrate what the major third should sound like, also where it fits on the neck, and give you some ideas on how to use it. And the lick's pretty cool too. So, as usual, we'll demonstrate the lick, I'll break it down for you, and then at the end of the video, I'll give you some tips on how I think you should practice this and things to look out for so that it will really get it sounding great, okay? So, that being said, let's check it out. Okay, guys, so I'm going to break this up into pieces. The first piece is this. Okay. What I'm doing here is I'm using my second finger on fret seven on the G, bending it up to the E or ninth fret, the same as the fret five on the B, okay? And I'm gonna be barring these two bottom fives. So I'm gonna be playing, bending that note up and then playing the B and the E. Standard sort of rock and roll like that one. And then what I'm doing then is I'm playing the B again with a downstroke and then with an up, I'm gonna be picking the eight with my third finger and pulling it off, so. It's actually quite cool, that. So the second part of this lick is I'm doing the same thing for the first three notes. And then, the first time we're here in the major third, I'm doing it up here. I'm gonna be picking this note on the nine with my pinky, which is the major third, pulling it off there, coming over onto the eight, then up on the five on the E, down on the eight, pull off the five, and then a bend. Okay, so that'll look like this slow. Okay, like that. It might take you a bit of work to do that because you need a little bit of strength to do those bends, okay? But once you've done that, you've got the first part of this really. I would say the first half of this, the juice of this. So we've got the two licks, and the second lick has got that first introduction to the major third here on fret nine. So to continue, if you remember, we finished with this bend here, okay? So we're gonna continue this like we're you know, doing the whole thing together. So the next part of this is gonna be the B and the E again. Then we're gonna do this lick here. Okay, so we're gonna go down on the A on the B, pull off the five. Then we're coming over onto the flat five, which is fret eight on the G. I'm gonna be picking that, and then I'm gonna be pulling off to seven, pulling off to five. But this time, when I come over onto the root, A, mid root, here on fret seven, I'm actually gonna be doing it with my third finger, okay? And that's fret seven on the D. Okay, so that's the A note there. Okay. So, what we have so far is this. Okay, and from here, what I do is I flatten my third finger, upstroke the seven on the G, then I roll it kind of back, I pick down on the seven on the A again, on the D string. Now this time, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pick up on fret five on the G, but this time I'm gonna hammer my second finger onto fret six, which is the major third again. This is the second time we're gonna hear it. So that'll look like this all together. Okay. So that's where it goes from kind of like minor to major. That's where you get a sudden change and it, it really sort of sticks out sonically. So from there, we go back over to the mid root. Okay, seven on the D. Then we're picking up on the five. Then we're picking down on the seven on the D, pulling off the five. Okay. Then we're going to pick down on the seven on the A, pull off the five, and this time slide down to four, which is the third iteration of the major third. Like that. And we're then going to hammer our pinky back onto the mid root to get that kind of major chordal sound there. And then I just finish with an A like that. Okay. So let me show you that again from, from the beginning. Okay, putting all that together now, let's go through it nice and slow.
Okay, so for recommendations here, what I would advise you to do is if you're gonna use your third here, just remember that you're gonna be reaching out with your pinky for this nine, for the major third here, and then you're also gonna be using it here for the eight. Okay, that might give you a few problems, so just bear that in mind if you're not gonna use the fingerings that I gave you. Also, what you might wanna look out for is when you're finishing this off, you really wanna kinda do your best to force that pinky down on that mid root there, okay, on seven on the D, so that you're hitting that A note, and it's really kind of almost as loud, if not as loud, as the fret four on the A. Okay, you really want that to try and come through as much as possible, okay? You might get lucky and it's really, really loud. It's not always gonna be the same, but do your best, okay? Also, another thing that I would recommend is make sure if you can, that when you're bending up to this kind of rock and roll lick at the beginning, you know, you're really getting that bend up there. Make sure your guitar is obviously in tune. That's just goes without saying, but you want to try and make sure those two notes are really, really similar. It really gives it that edge if you can do that. Another recommendation I would say is if you're gonna do this, do it to a metronome, try and keep it slow, keep the notes all moving nice and evenly and free together, and just be aware that the positions for the major third, okay, just so that you've got them in your head, in, in terms of A minor position here, in this particular octave of it, it's gonna be nine, okay, then it's gonna be six on the G, so that's nine on the E, six on the G, and four on the A. Okay, that's the major third positions there. Another tip I would give you is the middle part here, if we take the flat five on the G, going down to the mid root, okay, and then you're doing the rolling thing, and then like that, that. That's something you really wanna practice if you don't know how to do that already, because it's used a lot in blues and rock, okay, and it's a really, really kind of interesting, cool little skill to have, because you can fit it in almost to anything when you're doing anything anywhere, so. But what we're doing here, as I said, is we're adding our second to get the major thirds, yeah? And resolving onto that A there on that mid root just makes everything sound so great. It really showcases the major third, really stands out. Okay. 